What's up, everybody? It's Josh coming at you from Nerd Adventures Tower, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, Episode 6, the finale of this series, is almost here. And we've been promised the rematch of the century between Kenobi and Darth Vader. And I think we're going to get plenty of that in this episode, but the end of Episode 5 also teases the character of Reva learning about the existence of Luke Skywalker. And for my own mental health and for the sake of the Star Wars fandom, I hope that situation and plot is resolved in a way that is way different than the old plot leaks we all read a couple of months back. And don't worry, I'm not going to explicitly talk about the leaks in this video. We'll keep it as spoiler-free as we possibly can, but at the end of this video, I do want to go into some possible changes that have been made to that ending and how I could accept that happening. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's crazy, and I really wish that they hadn't done this i i hope it's not going down the way i think it is oh my god but we'll have plenty of time to talk about all of that after the series is over and we see it for ourselves but first let's talk about the positives the rematch of the century between darth vader and kenobi man this is basically what the whole show is about it's what most of us are looking forward to seeing and i do believe that there's a lot of evidence from the other episodes and sort of how they're handling some of this stuff what's being said out there that man this is going to be something special i mean if you take a look at episode five clearly the vader fight and the way he uses the force against reva is an absolute highlight of not only that episode but the series overall and it's like the perfect way to do a vader fight on screen i mean the overall take and what the fight really shows us as the viewer is that darth vader is just in a totally another world he is in a totally different class of not only force user but lightsaber combatant than reva like in my mind, I do think that Vader at this point in canon has the ability and the strength to just cut through people really quickly and savagely, very similar to the way we see him in Rogue One. But when it comes to fighting a Jedi and doing something one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like Vader really wants to toy with this person, and particularly with Reva, he wants to watch the hope drain from her as she does everything she can to try to take him out, and he very easily rebuts all of these different attacks continues to sort of push her with the force drag her around take her weapon from her throw it in front of her and then beat her again in one-on-one -on -one saber combat it's so disrespectful and awesome because he is that powerful he's clearly toying with her and i really liked the way that this fight was shown on screen and something like that is not easy to pull off you can see from some of the behind the scenes shots that there is a whole team that is involved in bringing vader's movements to life on screen there's a couple of different really big good stunt dudes there's a movement coordinator and then of course everybody that's doing the photography and the other actor all have to work in unison to create an epic darth vader fight and different really cool moments so basically if they can replicate what they did in episode Episode five but dial it up even more we're gonna be in for a real treat and maybe one of the best live action vader fights we've ever seen which would really i think help the show and really solidify it as this really important part of canon and this thing that star wars fans really love i know many of you guys are really loving kenobi out there i'm personally kind of you know mixed on it so far but this opportunity this exact fight has the ability to just make this show really important to me and make it something that I revisit and think about over and over again. And on the other side of things, I do think that Ewan McGregor is very capable with his lightsaber training. And we see this especially spelled out in the flashback sequence in episode five where he's fighting with Hayden. I mean, kudos to both of those guys. They really haven't lost a step. And that fight looked so prequel with really fluid motions, a lot of quick attacks. The sabers were flowing, man. I absolutely loved it. So he's very capable. I don't necessarily expect Obi-Wan in the current story to be able to do all the things that the old Obi-Wan did back in the day. But I do think he's obviously going to be way better than he was in the fight in episode three and embracing his position, embracing the light side of the force and embracing his task to fight Vader is going to be a big part of this. I mean, he was literally just terrified of Vader. He had barely started to connect back to the force. Now he's in a different spot. And I do expect that Obi-Wan will be able to hold his own. 
I mean, if you go back and analyze the fight from Revenge of the Sith, Anakin is damn near at the height of his power. And Obi-Wan is just not on that level, not even close. But he's so good at his defensive form, and he had spent so much time training with Anakin, he knew a lot of his different attacks. So he was able to hold him off up until Anakin loses control and makes a massive strategic mistake in not respecting the high ground. And while I don't think the high ground is going to be the thing that gets Vader again i mean that would be really crazy i do think that a lot of what obi-wan knows about anakin and now vader will come into play i mean they've been sort of spelling this out in the show as well especially in the last episode he just wants victory so badly and he's so aggressive that that's how he gets caught but you know the thing that could really push this fight over the edge for me would be if it's absolutely incredibly choreographed beautifully shot and is a spectacle of lightsaber goodness but is also on top of all of that really in depth for the characters and for the struggle that these two men have. The dialogue in this fight is very important. As in A New Hope, it's not just the sabers that they have flashing and clashing back and forth, but the different bits of line that they deliver to one another. It's really epic and sets up a lot of the themes for the rest of those movies. And we're at a place where I just want to see how they feel about each other and how they're going to talk about each other. Perhaps the nature of the Force, destiny, how confident is Vader, not only in this fight, but in his servitude of the Emperor, and perhaps his ability to be able to overcome the emperor i just want to know like where is his head at what is he willing to share to his master and then on the other side does kenobi have any faith in anakin at all is he going to bring up padme is he going to bring up the force the balancing of the force and the fact that anakin was the chosen one how much of that stuff is going to be said and expressed during this fight and so basically i see several different ways in which this fight could be absolutely epic super important to the canon and something that really brings a lot of star wars fans together to celebrate but unfortunately i think the ending of the show with reva and luke skywalker is sure to divide some fans now look again uh gotta be honest here of course heard about this ending a long time ago in the leaks and it triggered me a lot back then i still don't think this is a good idea to inject this into the story i guess for me i'm hoping that the fight and the dialogue between anakin and vader is so epic at the beginning or maybe in the first half of this episode that whatever happens at the end is kind of excusable or maybe not that big of a deal but we do know that reva is likely heading to tatooine we see luke skywalker at the end of episode five it's really teasing out that she will have something to do with luke and there's all sorts of canonical issues with something like this happening and how it's going to affect the character of uncle owen the character of luke skywalker the character of obi-wan possibly the character of reva if she is still alive at the end of this show and i think she will be i mean you know i don't think this is that spoilery but originally it was reported that she would die at the end of the show right selflessly sacrificing herself and some of the stuff that she knows dying with her in order to close that loop for canon's sake but now we're hearing that that's probably not the case and there was a scene in episode five that to me made it pretty sure that the end of episode six had changed from when the plot leaks had originally surfaced online and there's even some discussion out there that they've changed the ending even more to remove other certain things that could could fly in the face of canon and i'm hopeful that some of these changes will sort of make that weird medicine go down a little bit better and again if that vader fight is awesome perhaps i'll be able to accept it but i just can't help but feel that reva knowing about luke skywalker knowing about anakin going to tatooine and having all of that knowledge is just really gonna mess with canon and i'm really interested to see how that's going to be dealt with what is obi-wan going to do about that and just how do star wars fans feel about it now the last thing i'll say about this is there are rumors of a season two of kenobi or at least the story with some of these characters being continued <laughs> And I suppose some of the questions that an ending with Reva and Luke on tattooing could create could in turn be answered with a second season of the show with Kenobi going after her or something like that. So there are ways in which this could perhaps be resolved later. And we don't know the full story here of what changes have been 
being made and how Star Wars is handling this situation. So we will just have to wait and see. But I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't incredibly skeptical of this actually landing because a lot of the stuff they do in the show, even so far, has flown way too close to the sun of canon, in my opinion, and kind of borderline feels like they don't care about canon. So I guess we'll just have to watch it together and see how we feel. I'll, of course, be doing a watch party live with the finale episode and uh you know we'll react to it live which those things are always super fun and then we'll be talking about the episode live thursday this thursday after the show has come out we'll go live at 10 30 over on our live streaming channel and i'll tell you all about how i feel about it. i'll spill my goddamn guts to you that's all i got <sighs> hoping this is good let me know what you think about all of this stuff in the comment section below